I'm Dr. Estelle Levitin. I'm professor of biology at the University of Tulsa and a fellow of the American Academy of Allergy, Asthma, and Immunology. For the past 30 years, I've been studying airborne allergens, both pollen and mold spores. And right now, I'm going to talk to you about fungal spores or mold spores. The atmosphere is filled with airborne spores. Uh, as this image shows, you see a wide diversity of different spore types. Fungi is a broad term for organisms that include molds, as well as more complex organisms like mushrooms, bracket fungi, and puffballs. Fungi uh, in nature are decomposers. They recycle nutrients from dead and um, non-living or non organic material. These nutrients go back to the environment and then are used by plants all over again. So fungi are a vital part of our environment. Fungi reproduce by spores and the spores may be large like this one on the screen, or they may be very small spores. What they have in common is that for the vast majority of the fungi, the spores are released into the atmosphere. That means at certain times the air is filled with spores. This image shows a mushroom, um, actually two different mushrooms. Um, the one on the left is showing an intact mushroom and the one on the right is showing mushrooms releasing spores. On a windy day, the atmosphere can have high levels of spores. As this air sample shows, the spore levels are very high and they're very dense and very diverse. Even on rainy weather, uh, when you think the air is clear, after it stops raining, the air becomes filled with a different type of spore that likes wet weather. And this image shows the type of spores you see in a rainy day. Let's not forget the outdoor, uh, let's not forget the indoor environment. And mold can be indoors as well. And these two pictures that you'll see are moldy indoor environments that occurred from leaks. This was a water heater leak that sprayed water on the closet door. And this was a leak from a restroom that leaked down through to the floor below, causing mold growth on the ceiling. Mold can be abundant almost any time of the year. Since it's a natural part of the environment, you find it from spring to late fall. When the ground is frozen and covered with snow, mold levels will be very low, but once um, the once spring arrives and the temperatures warm up, mold levels start all over again. They're especially high in the fall, and walking through the woods is, can be a dangerous place if you're mold allergic. The decaying vegetation on the forest floor in the autumn can have high levels of mold. There are other times of the year that are bad as well in other locations. It will be helpful to know what types of mold you're allergic to. Um, the type that proliferate indoors means you should avoid attics, moldy basements, and rooms where there are leaks. 